Hey guys, Lord of Pontel here with another video for Rise of Empires, Ice and Fire. Today, this is the next video in my Heroes Guide series. So today we're going to be looking at the second S1 Archer Hero, which is the Pacer. Before we get onto him, just a little bit of a, an update um, on my main account. A couple of things from today. Today's been a really lucky day for me. Um, when I was doing my free super recruit this morning, my daily free super recruit, I picked up a Lionheart duplicate. So S1 Lionheart. If you've seen the video, he is a cav, back row cav hero. I have two other back row cav heroes, Avalanche and Living Saints. So getting Lionheart uh, with a second dupe is really nice. Uh, so I've just opened his, I've been able to open his sixth and eighth skills. Um, need a few wisdom medals to uh, upgrade his skills um, but he's going to be if I do run with three cav legions then he's going to be my third uh, back row hero so he's going really nicely and uh, Jade I have maxed her all seven of her skills now as well so good decent heroes day for me uh, we are actually here in 55 and in our Eden group um, we've had another ex-hero recruitment event today and we had last week we had a season four uh, recruitment event and then two weeks ago we had um, an ex-heroes event where we had um, one of the banners from SX1 and then we had the SX3 banner and today we've got the second SX1 banner here and you'll see we've got the SX2 banner um, which has Army Breaker, Avalanche, Datch and the Tarantula. I have each of these heroes and I would love to be able to do this banner today, um, but I've only got 54 super tickets and it's, that would be really borderline if I was to pick up uh, a guaranteed X hero with only 54 tickets. So I'm going to have to hold off. I don't want to waste those and, and not get anything. Um, but that's just to give you an idea of the kind of changes on, on the banners as we go through the Eden season, uh, when you're going to want to save your tickets for. And um, the other thing is I have, if we go into events, I have reached the last four of Heroes Duel again this week. Um, I think part this is partly due to some of the other large strong players in our, in our state are not taking part in... Um, Alliance duel, but I, uh, in the in the heroes duel, uh, but I did have some pretty big wins to get today uh, against some old teammates, and um, I, I went eight and two and finished fourth. Um, and it's an all un, all undisputed lineup representing fifty five this weekend, and we're up against state ninety two. Um, so that that's going to start from tomorrow, and tomorrow I am up against Sabertooth. He's got more more kills than me, but then I'm not a I'm not a pure killer player, always going after people anyway, so most people do. And uh but only nineteen million power, so we'll see we'll see what he's packing tomorrow. And unfortunately I'll be at work so I won't be able to do a video on that. I would have liked to have, but hopefully uh one day I'll I'll make top four, uh top four uh for the quarterfinals and it'll be my day off. Uh but after we'll have to wait a, a little bit longer for that. So on to the topic at hand, which is Mr. Pacer. So oh, let's go. We'll go recruit. Oh, not this one. We'll go into super recruit. And here we go. So we just did volunteer in the last video. So we're on to the Pacer. The second of the three S1 Archer heroes, as it tells you here. He is ranged. This hero excels at ranged combat, suitable for leading mid or back rows. And let's have a look at his skills. First skill, of course, is the Dictator, adding your 23,100 troops to your squad. Second skill, his first hero-specific skill. Its effective range is four, but he definitely is worth putting on your back row, potentially. And if we look here, the target is one random enemy squad, so it's a direct damage skill to the opponent. And this has 40% chance to deal between 160 and 558 damage to a single enemy target. So that's it, just direct damage to the opposition troops. 558% damage, that's a high damage level. 
Um, so that's a really good start for his first hero-specific skill. Skills three and four, as usual, defensive formation. First, this the skill three gives the extra 50% resistance. And skill four gives up to the extra 50% might, the offensive formation two skill. Moving swiftly on to skill five. So his second hero-specific skill, and as you can see here, it is another direct damage combat skill. Effective range is five, so if you had him on the back row, this could reach all three of the opponent's squads. And if we have a look, it's going to have one turn prep, so you, it would activate the turn after um, it's been it starts. And you've got a 30% chance to deal between 164% and again up to 566.5% damage to just the one enemy squad within range. But again, that is a high damage level. Um, and the Pacer probably does have the highest level of damage from his combat skills um, out of this group of S1 heroes. Also, interestingly, you can see here, along with the damage to the one enemy squad within range, it is also going to suppress them, unable to move for two turns. So this is similar to Iron Hand, who also has this. Um, another hero, Rosenblade, S2, Rosen, uh, S3, Rosenblade, Cav Hero has a suppression, suppression skill as well. And suppression means that both the normal troops and also the hero will not activate for two turns. So whichever, right, whichever squad, enemy squad, this skill is active on, the troops will not attack your troops and the hero will not activate a skill for two turns so that is that can be a very helpful um, skill particularly for instance if it was activated on the opponent's back row and you are blocking their killer hero from doing any damage for a quarter of the battle so this is this is again proclam proclamation it's it's a good skill on to skill six awaken applicable on your hero squad and as usual you will have up to between 25 and 250 percent bonus to leadership skills so maxing this skill at level 10 will give you the full amount of troops from the skill element of making up the troop number in a squad of course you're going to want to also level up um, your hero and increase your training ground for that for that legion to maximize your troops all the way to the max capacity uh, what else is he going to have well it will give up to a maximum of 15 percent might and resistance plus an extra 15 percent damage so pretty good awakened skill on the pacer as well to be honest on to seventh skill distant strike similar to um iron hand and also um lionheart the Pacer is the third of these long-range S1 heroes who have uh, this dual combination seventh skill where it is always it's passively active all the time and you'll get a lower level of buff. And then if you actually activate it by selecting it in the Legion menu, um, it will then give you the following, which is after using the skill, Heroes Formation has between 55% and 100% bonus marching speed. Very helpful and useful for archers who are, who are not as quick as cavalry. And it will give between 55% and 100% bonus archers might for 20 minutes with the 15 hour cooldown, which is the same duration and then cooldown period as it is on Lionheart and Iron Hand. And similarly, went to there as well. When not active, it, you still have a 30% effect in use during combat. Giving archers an extra 100% bonus on their might, you know, your archers are your killers anyway. Um, that's going to really help them do some damage and, and, and kills against, you know, your opponent's cavalry, for instance. That's going to be your core use. So a nice seventh skill as well for the pacer. On to skill eight. Again, it's his third hero specific skill and it's his third direct damage skill combat skill and the effective range is five again so it, it can target all three of the enemy squads even if he's on your back row and it is going to target all three of the random enemy squads within effective range so a really good skill here if it does activate it's going to attack all three 
of your opponent's squads in his formation. What's the extra information on it? Well, you've got a 45% chance to deal between 146% and 486% damage to the three random enemy squads within range. The only negative to this is that it's only going to potentially occur on turns two, five, and seven of the battle. So you've got a 45% chance three times in a battle that this skill will work. So really, if you play the numbers, it's going to work once a battle, twice if you're lucky, really. But again, this skill, le this damage level, sorry, the damage level is much higher than, for instance, Iron Hand and um, and Li uh, Lionheart. So the Pacer overall, he, if his skills activate, he will do a lot of damage. Um, to your opponents because of that, that high damage percentage on all three of his skills. I think he's probably one of the one of the best S1 heroes, if not the best. Um, probably him and Iron Hand, I would say, are the two best. Um, he just because of what he gives, what he can do, and. Uh, if you look at longevity in the game, well, when we look at back row heroes on archers, you yes, in S2 you, there is Witch Hunter, and if you get Inquie and Witch Hunter, those two S2 archer heroes combine really well together. But if you don't get Inquie, then the pacer is more than adequate. And at S3, you only get Skybreaker, which is a front row archer hero really um so potentially if you don't pick up witch hunter in season two the pacer is perfectly good all the way through to season four and um to be honest i've still seen people using him even today um in eden and um on their on their archer formations and they're doing significant damage so you, he, he can be a long-term viable solution for you um having said that when you do get to um, S4, um, you're going to um, come up and find Jade Eagle, um, who would be a big step up on the pacer. And um, also in um, SX as well, uh, there's Spectral Reaper, who is uh, the meta back row archer's hero. So there are a couple, there are three other heroes um, that would be ahead of pacer but if but certainly he is very very usable um all the way up to s4 um if you don't have inquiry on your middle row and potentially as i say he, he's still going to be very very adequate for you uh in the long run if you're not a big spender you know picking up every hero that goes so that is the pacer guys as i say one of the better s1 um, season heroes and um, definitely if you've got T9 archers and you're focused on that putting them in your in your legion uh, will be a big benefit to you uh, you can always put Zoro um, on the middle row he's a really good he's one of the better normal orange heroes as well so if you had Zoro and Peso you could do significant damage with that legion so that is the we'll, we've just got the one more to go on the S1 series uh, so let's just have a quick look and we are going to be looking at Cincinnatus in the next one, the Cincinnatus. So uh, I'll be reviewing him in a couple of days, guys. Thank you very much for all the support on the channel. Um, the last couple of days I've done a thousand views per day, which is just absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, I think I've doubled my subscriptions in about a week as well. So I'm really getting some serious momentum on the channel. Um, thank you also to everyone that's messaged me in game. I'm getting like various people messaging me on my in my in, on count on my C25s in my hive. Um, so obviously everyone knows where I'm living on on Rise of Empires. Um, and uh, yeah, I just really appreciate all the positive support that everyone's been giving, and I'm I'm really pleased that everyone is enjoying the videos and the content that I'm making. And I'll, I'll try my best to continue to produce really good quality videos. Uh, informative videos for you all um, which is the aim of, of, of this channel so yeah thank you very much guys um, so that is everything for this season hero guide 
review on the Pacer. Thanks for watching and I will see you soon.